public school teachers who act more like they're members of the mafia than they do public servants of the people and parents. That's the topic of today's Bold and Blunt. And I'm your host, Cheryl Chumley, giving you a Christian conservative look at today's news, politics, culture, and events. Happy to announce, too, that Bold and Blunt is available at edify.app, the online platform for faith-based podcasts. What is going on in America's public school system? Scarcely had we turned the corner on the coronavirus and schools were just getting opened when, voila, here comes the teachers unions, here comes the servants of the community, the ones who are supposed to educate your children, saying, nope, we're not going to go back to school, not until we get our contract demands fulfilled. And so what do we have? Well, listen up. It is a familiar sound in America's public school systems, or at least on the streets outside of America's school buildings in America in recent years. This is what we have. What do we want? Now, now, what do we want? A fair contract. When do we want it? Now, now. Teachers took to the streets outside Kent School District buildings into the streets. This is in Washington. Instead of opening school as they were planned to after stay-at-home orders for almost two years, right, around America, where several school systems around America went even beyond the stay-at-home orders that local government bureaucrats insisted on businesses and churches abiding. Schools in some places in America just recently opened this semester, this year, and the ones that were supposed to open in many cases did not. Why? Because teachers, teachers unions, what do we want? A fair contract. When do we want it? Now. So the news organizations that cover these teacher strikes that have been plaguing America like cancers in recent times always try and at least present the teacher side in a sympathetic way. They talk about these poor, overtasked, overburdened teachers who are short-staffed. They also talk about how COVID made the school systems even more short-staffed, and therefore they need more money, more money, more money to hire more teachers or to pad the pockets of the teachers who have withstood the coronavirus and are continuing to teach in the school systems. But if you look beyond what the media puts out in terms of fawning coverage of these teachers with their union representatives, you will see that in many cases, the communities in which these teachers are pressing for higher pay and more benefits are actually, are actually some of the lower income areas of America. If you look beyond the headlines, what you find is that teachers in these communities are already pretty well paid for the cost of living standards of their communities. And yet, few newspapers point that out. It's not hard to find out. For instance, let me read you these statistics from Glassdoor.com. That is an organization that tracks salaries and benefits and and cost of living standards and such for various positions around the nation. And so for their page for salary details for a teacher at Kent School District in Seattle, Washington, where the teachers were just striking in the streets, that clip I just paid, played for you. Let me read you this clip from Glassdoor. The estimated total pay for a teacher at Kent School District is $100,337 per year. This number represents the median, which is the midpoint of the ranges from our proprietary total pay estimate model and based on salaries collected from our users 
the estimated base pay is $100,337 per year. That's not bad, right? The most likely range Glassdoor estimates for Kent School District is between $82,000 and $123,000 a year for teachers, okay? So, let's compare that to the median or average incomes for this same community. According to point2homes.com, which tracks realtor costs, realtor agency data to include cost of living standards for the various communities that the realtor agents serve. Average household income in Kent, $92,593. Median household income in Kent, $73,891. $73,891. There are, according to point2homes.com, 14,753 people in Kent living below the poverty level versus 111,654 people in Kent living above the poverty level. And here we have teachers demanding a fair contract, fair pay, fair salaries. They already make more than what the average and median income levels are for the community in which they serve. See, that's the data that so often goes missing from the news media when they cover these whiny teachers in the streets petitioning for more, 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 demanding more, 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 all the while holding your children hostage, my children hostage, all the while exploiting the situation, exploiting the poor parents who need to get their kids dropped off at school so they can go to work and make a living for themselves and for their children. What happens to those parents when their kids can't go to school because these whiny teachers are demanding more, more, more in their red t-shirts, in their communist colored clothing in the streets outside public school systems? Fire them. Fire the teachers and get people who really want to work. But you know why? That is an unsustainable plan, a not very feasible plan. Because the Democrats that allow these union members to exploit children and send teachers into the streets wearing communist clothing and demanding more, allow it to happen. They won't fire the teachers. They won't do a Ronald Reagan and fire the union air traffic controllers. They won't do that. You know why? Because in the end, the Democrats gain big from these whiny teachers unions leaders who demand fees who in turn take those union fees and feed them into the campaign coffers of the Democrat Party. And in the end, who stands who stands really screwed over? The taxpayers, because we're the ones who pay for these whiny teachers to stand in the streets and demand more and more and more. Well, my guest today has some solutions about this. And as a matter of fact, she spent 20 years in liberal la-la land, California, fighting as a member, as a teacher in the public school system, fighting back against this incessant whine from the unions for more money, more pay, more taxpayer benefits, and so forth. And for that, she was completely vilified, attacked, sidelined, assaulted. She wrote a book about it, and now she spends her time advocating for parents around the nation to support the good teachers in the school systems, the ones who are shocked and in awe at how the unions have corrupted their fine vocation and are currently exploiting children for personal and political gain. She tells parents, support the good teachers, but boot the bad ones, get rid of the unions, and she's here today to talk about how she has successfully been fighting on behalf of the public school systems in America, while at the same time recognizing the fact that 
it's going to be a very difficult climb, a very difficult wall to climb in order to take back our public school system from the socialists and communists who have snatched it away. Her name is Rebecca Friedrichs. She was an elementary school teacher in the public school system in California for something like 28 years, and now she is the founder of 4kidsandcountry.org. Go to the website, check it out, and find out how to join the fight. In the meanwhile, listen to her words of wisdom now. Rebecca, thank you so much for being on Bold and Blunt. I really appreciate your time. It's so great to be here. Thank you so much, Cheryl. So it's like we turn the corner on the coronavirus only to enter the strike zone for teachers uh, in certain communities around the nation. What the heck is going on with the teachers' unions? They finally opened the schools, and now teachers want to close them. Well, the first thing that your listeners need to understand is we need to stop giving them the credibility of being called teacher unions because they are neither representatives of professional teachers nor are they professional unions. These people are an education mafia. And what's going on here, both with the school closures via COVID and now the the teacher strikes, is that this education mafia, their goal is to dumb down our schools. Their goal is to... um, you know, cause teachers to be unprofessional, to bring in activists and chase out the great teachers. So why are they striking? Because this education mafia wants more money, they want more power, they want more control. They don't care about the kids, they don't care about learning, they don't care about professional teachers. They care about uh, controlling our educational system so that they can use it to promote their socialist slash communist agenda and undermine the American Free Republic. So once people see who these people really are, then it becomes very clear why they keep doing things to close our schools or undermine our teachers or our parents or student learning. Were you surprised when you saw the headlines just as school was about to open in Seattle, the teachers there decided to go on strike? I wasn't surprised at all. And and again, I will guarantee you, a majority of the teachers, the real professional teachers, are against it and are mortified by it. But they're being bullied by this education mafia that is using teachers and, and children as pawns and taxpayers as pawns to push their agenda. I wasn't surprised by it at all because I understand what these people are about. And I also understand that the state of Washington is controlled by this education mafia, as is my state, California. So they they get their stronghold in the really large districts. They always, um, you know, target those large districts first because they can get more done that way. So when I heard that Seattle was striking and, and you know, districts in Ohio, I thought, of course they are. Those areas are fully controlled by the education mafia. I want to talk to you a little bit about what you said. Uh, a lot of the teachers are mortif- mortified by what they're seeing, by what their fellow teachers are doing in terms of striking. Because I've heard from other parents, pundits, um, news hosts talking about not all teachers are part and parcel of this strike mentality. Most teachers are good. It's only a few bad apples who are pushing this social agenda. But what I want to know is where are these teachers that oppose what the teachers' unions are doing in terms of speaking out and opposing publicly the actions of their leadership? Yeah, Cheryl, that is such a great question. I was one of those teachers who yes. spoke out. And I can tell you, I was squelched immediately. So the education mafia owns the media. You know, they're part of this big... Um, you know, getting things out on social media, blocking people's posts and those kind of things. This Ed Mafia is part of all that. So they very much control the narrative. So teachers like me who speak out against it, number one, our voices are squelched. Number two, because they truly are a mafia, think about how a cartel or a mafia treats people, right? You you speak out, you get whack a mole You know, you, you try to stop the evil that's going on, they chase you out of your job. So what's going on with most teachers is they're too terrified to speak out. When I was still in the classroom, I was often the only one who would speak out against what the uh, so-called unions were doing. Uh, And most of the teachers would just cower in the corner. And later they'd come to me in a quiet, you know, empty room. They'd look up to see if there were cameras.
cameras on and they'd say, hey, I agree with you, Rebecca. And I'd say, why don't you stand with me? Why don't we stand as a group? And every time they'd just shrug their shoulders, they were so terrified, they couldn't do it. So one of the things I'd love people to notice is when you see a teacher strike, you know, when you see the mob in the streets, notice that up in the front are the activists, the ones that the unions hand-selected and brought into the school system. They aren't real teachers. They're, they're activists who are there pushing an agenda. They're up in the front. I have had good, honest teachers report to me that Antifa shows up for these teacher strikes and Black Lives Matter, no surprise, the unions brag about helping uh, Black Lives Matter get started. So these are the people who are pushing these strikes and who get on camera. But if you're able to see the teachers behind in the line, they're terrified, they're embarrassed, their heads are down. So these teachers are just, you know, they've been bullied into submission or told you're going to lose your job if you don't come out to the strike. So um, it, it's just, uh, you know, it's time for Americans to stand up with good teachers because I don't know anybody who's ever uh, stood up to the mafia by themselves. And so teachers, are they need help. They just need us to stand with them so they can have the courage to stand up to this nightmare. I really believe teachers can save America if they'll stand up to this mafia and kick it out of our schools. Is there any sense in creating some sort of alternative teachers' unions where those with countering viewpoints uh, that go against what you say is the mafia side of things in the, in the school systems, is there any sense in creating some sort of alternative organization so these teachers who are uh, disgusted by what they're seeing have a, a strength in numbers type of voice? Yeah, the alternative idea is a great one, and there are some organizations out there, one's called Christian Educators Association International, one's called Association of American Educators. Both of them are easily accessed on our website, for kidsandcountry.org, and teachers can already join those, and, and they, rep, they uh, provide liability insurance and a network for these teachers, but there's nothing equal to the, to the mass size of this education mafia because nobody has the billions and billions of dollars that this mafia collects annually tax-free and they collect it through paycheck deductions. So at this point, I think the answer is, you know, we, myself and some other teachers, sued the unions and eventually uh, we were able to get a win. No one's forced to fund these government unions anymore, but most people don't know that. So our goal is to ask people, look, uh, adopt everyone you know who's a teacher or a government employee. Let them know they don't have to pay this wicked mafia anymore. On our website, free of charge, we help people get out of the unions. And um, that our, our goal is let's get more and more people out of the unions so we're not paying this evil uh, through taxpayer-funded you know, union dues. Um, and then the other thing that teachers can do is they can stand together and kick these unions out of their districts. It's a big fight, um, but that needs to happen. And also our legislature and our courts need to make these unions illegal, government unions illegal. They truly are domestic enemies. They're destroying our country and our children and our families. So it's time for us to make them illegal. And I think if we did that, the teachers wouldn't need this united voice. They never had one before. It was this union that came together to bring them this united voice, and all it's done is destroy us. So I suggest we just get back to what we used to do before the unions were formed in 1857, and we just let teachers be teachers again, let parents and teachers run the schools again. You say what parents need to do is to support the teachers, uh, the, maybe, you know, not the mafia teachers, but support the teachers that really do want to just teach students. How, practically speaking, can parents, say there's a parent listening right now and wants to do just that, how to be pragmatic about supporting local teachers without feeding into that union frenzy? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked this. Parents are key. So are pastors and any religious leaders who care about the kids in the community. So key because they reach large numbers of people. And so if people really want to get involved and they want to stand with a teacher, they can come to our website for kidsandcountry.org. Click on Adopt a Teacher. We teach you how to do it. It takes three minutes to learn how to stand with a teacher. You'll understand. They're terrified. They're in a corrupt system. Once you understand how they're feeling, you basically just stand with them and become a support, uh, an encourager, empower. 
empower them, give them the courage to get out of the union. And so once we start educating more and more teachers and get folks to stand with them in their communities, then these teachers will find the courage to reject these unions. And we could reach a critical mass and, you know, then get the unions out. So it's just these parents are a lot more key than they think they are. And one warning I'd give to the parents is there's a lot of a narrative out there right now that teachers are bad and all school board members are bad. Well, that's what the, you know, the education mafia wants us to think. They want us to hate each other and turn on each other. The fact is the majority of teachers are good. And there's many good school board members, too, if they're not controlled by the teacher unions or funded by the teacher unions, the, the Ed Mafia. Um, so it, it's standing together in your community with good people that you trust, who are teachers, school board members, running for school board, and not falling for that uh, divisive tactic of fighting each other, but standing together and fight the education mafia together. Kick them out. Uh, we've always had the right to kick them out. It just takes a majority of people in the bargaining unit to say, we don't want you anymore, and you can kick them out. So um, so it's just, it, it's key. It's key that we stand together. And, and a lot of parents don't realize, because this education mafia has a, part of their propaganda is telling parents, oh, you're, you're not smart enough to educate your own child. Only the experts can do that. Well, it's a lie. Parents are the best educator for their children. They know their children better than anyone. And I don't care if you don't even speak English. You can still teach your child. Pull out a phonics book. You'll learn English while you're teaching your child phonics. So uh, parents are the number one. They've got to step back into that role, stand with good, honest, godly teachers who are there to serve your children, kick out all the activists, kick out the special interest groups and the advocacy groups, and we can turn this around pretty quickly. Can you point to any success stories about what you say about kicking out the unions? Because from my perspective, it seems to me that there's a cyclical um, base for the funding that goes on. The Democrats get their funding big time from the teachers unions. The teachers unions take their money from fees and then feed it into the Democrat Party once again. So it just seems like one hand is washing the other. that we should never have government unions and they used to be illegal and they were illegal for good reason because when you're collecting dues from taxpayer dollars because the taxpayers fund the government employees and then you use those dues to fund candidates and you know campaigns and then you bargain across the table from people you put in office and people you're going to promote to the next level the whole thing is corrupt you're 100 percent right that this education mafia gives most of its money to the democrat party and uh it's highly corrupt they're behind the biden regime they're behind obama all of these who have done great damage to our american free republic and so it, so this corrupt system you know must be stopped um you know how, are there any good examples of success yes uh, there was a i can't remember if it was called lost Vegas school district, but it was in the Nevada, Las Vegas area. Very recently, a couple years ago, there was a district that completely decertified from the unions. And there have been a lot of smaller districts. It's easier to do a decertification in a smaller district. There have been many across the country where teachers have stood together. They've gotten a majority. You just need a simple majority, 50% plus one person, to vote the union out. Now, just a warning, the union fights like tooth and nail. There's a story in my book, a whole chapter about uh, some teachers who tried to decertify the union. I think it was in New Hampshire many years ago. And they were attacked. The, the, the woman who led the charge, she was actually the union president. And she saw the corruption with how the union was stealing their money and not representing them. And so she led the decertification. And she said they attacked her like she was President Trump running for office. I mean, they're just brutal mafia people. So people have to know it's hard. It's hard to fight them, but you can do it. And uh, it, you just have to stand together. And it's very important that your community stands with you. And, and the, the people that are not successful, they don't educate their community first. So then their community falls for the propaganda of the unions who come in, who work through the PTA, which has been corrupted by the unions, and they lie to people and get them to believe the lies about the people trying to learn to lead the decertification. 
But if you educate your community first and they're aware of the evils of the unions and get them to stand together, then you can take these unions out. This is the reason I wrote a book, and we also had a movie come out recently. It's to educate people on these evils so they can stand together. And we're always happy to help them, too. If you have anyone that reaches out, send them our way. We'd be happy to help. <laughs> and, of course, uh, Governor, former Governor Scott Walker um, had some successes fighting back the unions out in his state of Wisconsin some years ago, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Oh, my goodness. I'm a big fan of Scott Walker. <laughs> <laughs> unions came after him. They came after students who dared to stand for Governor Walker. Uh, we I have a testimony of one of those students in my book, and there was a teacher that I've also written about who dared to stand up and say, yeah, I agree with Governor Walker. I, I think this is a good thing. And the unions chased her out of her job. So uh, this is why I say these people are the mafia. Uh, they're brutal. And we need more people like Governor Walker who stand up to them and do not allow them to control this country anymore. We just need to, we need to make them illegal. We need to get back to we the people, you know, governing and our government being our representatives, doing what it is we ask them to do. And we do that by getting this, this you know, all of these government unions removed from our system. So let me ask you the final question here. There, there have been some who have said our public school systems are completely and utterly broken, and it's time to realize that there is no solution to fix them. Do you see that yet? Do you see our public school systems in America as irredeemable and time to move on? As long as the education mafia and all of their special interest groups stay in our schools, they are totally unredeemable. We cannot fix them. ACLU is in our schools. Southern Poverty Law Center is in our schools. Planned Parenthood is in our schools. This education mafia, the AKA teacher union, in our they're all running our schools. As long as these advocacy, special interest groups, corrupt people are running our schools, they are absolutely unredeemable. But if we can make all of that nonsense illegal, like it used to be, remove all of those special interests and what I call education mafia out of our schools. Let parents and good teachers, not activists, parents and good teachers be in charge again. Our schools are absolutely redeemable. I, I would say, in addition to that, though, part of what this mafia did was they purposely made our schools really humongous. It, you know, it's now a, 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 a huge complex our schools were never meant to be that way. Our American founders were very clear about uh, what makes great education. You know, they, they set us up with classical liberal arts education, which include, included the Greek and the Latin, Socratic method, classics. I mean, we were well-educated in America by eighth grade. We were more well-educated than a college graduate today, and we didn't have any indoctrination. Um, and, and that happened in small schools little one-room schoolhouses, home schools. They didn't call them co-ops, but little, you know, neighborhood schools, uh, little private schools. They call them dame schools. And we were doing amazing. Ninety percent of Americans were very well educated, were reading and writing. I mean, we were the, the world was amazed at what we were turning out. What were we? We were moral in our schools, and we had excellence in our schools, and our schools were run by teachers who didn't even have college degrees. They just were, you know, educated to be teachers. They could teach phonics. They could teach, you know, uh, astronomy and you know, math. And so we just need to get back to that. It's really very simple. Break up the big giant monopoly, get rid of the, you know, special interests who are there for their own power, their own control, their own money, who are there to destroy America and turn us into this socialist hellhole, uh, get rid of them, and we can fix it all. And the stakes certainly are high, especially now. We seem to be turning a corner on our country where our youth are being taught increasingly, increasingly to love socialism and hate America. And that's why I'm so thankful for the work you do. You know from inside out how to fight the school problems and the unions. And if you would, could you tell people the name of your book, the website again of your organization, and talk a little bit, finish up by talking a little bit about your movie? 
opportunity. So our website is forkidsandcountry.org. Our organization is called For Kids and Country. Our goal is just to educate people on what's really going on in America's schools. People are always fighting, you know, the branch issues, all the problems in our schools. Well, all those problems are caused by the same root enemy, the education mafia. So our goal is let's let's expose the education mafia, let's get them out of our schools, and then all these problems will go away. Um, the book is Standing Up to Goliath, and it's a, a book full of personal testimonies of teachers and parents, even some kids, and we expose the way we're treated by these this education mafia when we try to stand up to it, and, and we help people to understand it's not teachers causing the problem, it's this wicked um, you know, mafia that has infiltrated the teaching profession and bullied teachers. And so we help people see that, and then we also help them to uh, understand how they can stop funding it and how they can stand with us in a, in a network for good. And then our movie is called Whose Children Are They? People can also find that on our website, forkidsandcountry.org. And uh, we made the movie because um, there's a lot of people out there who don't read anymore. Huh, <laughs> because the Education Mafia has um, unfortunately removed great reading instruction from our school, so a lot of people don't like reading or aren't very good at it. So we made a movie so that we can reach more people. The movie's called Whose Children Are They? And it does the same thing. We just share the testimonies of teachers, uh, parents, and others who expose this horrible mafia in our schools and help people to understand we can stand together and, and you know, we need to stop allowing this mafia to rule and stop funding them. So that's everything, and they can find it all at forkidsandcountry.org. They can also find many free resources if they just click on Join the Movement. They can find all kinds of little buttons they can click to get help on how to adopt a teacher, how to union exit, get out of the unions, how we help you for free, um, how to get liability insurance from um, private organizations if you feel like you need that. It's better coverage for a lot less money, and so we just lead people to all those resources. That's awesome. Thank, thank you, Rebecca. Rebecca Friedrichs, you are such a warrior for the cause. And thank you for taking time out of your obviously busy schedule to speak with me on Bold and Blunt. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Cheryl. And I feel the same about you. You're a warrior, you're brave, and it's always a pleasure to be on your show. Excellent. Thank you. It's simple. Whether you have kids or not, whether your kids go to the public school systems or not, not the issue. What is the issue is that the next generation of leaders are currently being educated in America's public school systems. And if you don't like the fact that they are being trained to hate America and love China, to detest America's founding fathers and to love the policies and platforms of the United Nations, the World Health Organization, the World Economic Forum, and so forth, then it affects you. It's not a matter of whether you have kids or your kids go to the public school system. It's the fact that most in America do. And that is going to prove disastrous for America's future liberties if we don't have kids that understand about American exceptionalism. Thank you for listening. I want to remind you that if you like Bold and Blunt, you can check out Bold and Blunt at edify.app. That is the online platform for faith-based podcasts. Or you can get Bold and Blunt wherever podcasts are offered, including at WashingtonTimes.com. And one more quick mention, if you want to learn more about how the government is overreaching and stealing individual rights, including parental rights, check out my latest book. It's called Lockdown, the Socialist Plan to Take Away Your Freedom of Available wherever books are offered, also at sherrachumley.com. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time. And in the meanwhile, stay blunt, stay bold.